Baby, you ain't gonna hit me back then. Now it's all up, you got me on blast. Then you're over it. I've been done. We're so toxic. Can't get enough. Alrighty guys, good morning, good afternoon, and uh, good evening, welcome. Hope we're all doing well, hope we all had a good weekend, and I hope we're all looking forward to, to another week on the charts. That's a, we're, we're almost into the second week of March, uh, second trading week of March it is, so started off pretty well for myself, uh, only took two trades uh, in the first week, last week, and both were winners, so Apart from one break even on stream, so three trades, three, two, two wins and one break even. But it started off well, so I was happy with uh, the comeback after the previous week. Uh, yeah, so see what we've got in store today. Uh, GJ has just made a decent move, I didn't take it. Um, I'll explain why shortly. But we might as well get started as always. I will analyze both GJ and Gold. If anyone has any questions in the meantime, or if anyone would love to send, like to send a chart, I would really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, so you can do so in the meantime. Same as for the members. Hope you're doing well, guys. And let's get into it. So looking at GJ as we always do. Begin with GJ. Uh, all right. So I'm looking at the previous weekly, and to me that's a weak bullish candle. It closed with a long weak rejection to the upside, rejecting at 166 flat closing closer to its low. So just by looking at that, I expect there's a possibility that the current weekly, the upper, the one that's just obviously just open, creates a small upper wick, and then potentially begins to drive down below the previous weekly candles low. Just by looking at that high time frame, that's just something I'm seeing straight off the bat. It is a possibility. However, we are still a weak bullish candle on the previous weekly for the time being. <laughs> looking at the daily, 
structure still remains bullish. Uh, we're just in a pretty tight area consolidation at the moment. Bouncing off that 163 flat at the moment. We are still bullish in structure, as I said. The current daily candle has a higher high and a lower low to the previous. So don't really have any candle probabilities on our side. What we did do, and we will find out, we'll, I'll just show you M30 quickly. We did actually pop up to create the upper wick, first of all, and back down to create a low. And we're just sort of ping ponging about the moment. We uh, made a move back towards the current daily candles low, but we're bouncing off that support just now. Back to the four hour. This is what put me off taking any early entry. See, it's only Monday and looking at this, this to me just looks like absolute crap, in all honesty. You got wicks all over the shop. It's just a really strong, nasty area of consolidation, which lines up to a previous resistance over here to the left. But I think just by looking at this, anything above 163, between 163 and 164, it's gonna be pretty difficult trading at this stage. We are technically bearish in structure on a four hour. There's no real direction at the moment, just in a nasty area of consolidation. So that gives us a weekly, week bullish, daily bullish, four hour bearish. M30 structure is, again, it looks pretty nasty in M30. Still bearish from that initial drop that we had last Wednesday, a big sell off, which created a lower low. All this in between is just micro trend. So we are technically bearish in structure. We're hovering near the support around that 163 flat. <clears throat> I'll draw in my zones. We're gonna start off on the four hour as opposed to the daily. I'm drawing a zone around that 163.80 to 164 flat sort of level. That's a pretty solid, solid zone on the four hour. Obviously the support around 163 flat, 162, 80 to 163. I feel it's gonna be very difficult looking for any sort of sells at all until we get below really 162.60. Really, really choppy traffic on the on the minor time frames when I was looking at before. And as soon as you break one support, you just run into another support. So it's not gonna be easy, but I will mark in that level just there for now. And I will mark in the one slightly below and see what if we can just on the minor time frames and find a little bit more margin once we get below that 162, 8, 8, 50, 860, 870 sort of level. Um, resistance, make a draw, see what it looks like at, at 163, 68 level. No, I'm just going to remove it because there's no. Yeah, I'm just going to remove that level. I'm not interested in looking for buys above it, so there's no point having that. Need up these zones to the downside. So we've got a little bit of margin as you can see once we pop below 162,870. Not much, we've got about 16 pips roughly. Not the cleanest. That could be a potential area I may look to involve. I doubt at this stage though. I'm gonna draw in with a zone where the M30 structure will flip back bullish. And that will be it for, for the zones for the time being. All right, so now looking at GJ, as I mentioned before, four hour, just really nasty at the moment. When I see GJ like this from experience being in the charts constantly for, you know, the last three, four years, at the same time each day, I know it's best just to stay away from it. Let it decide what direction it wants to trend in. Once it's done that, and it's one that you potentially may have to come back NY or even tomorrow and see if it's broken through all this choppy area of consolidation over here to the left. It's just real nasty. So ideally, if I was to entertain any kind of entry today, it would probably have to be at this stage on a pullback. And this isn't where the structure flips back bullish, mind you guys. It's just an area that the price is respected around that. It's also just below that 164 flat level. So if we do pull back up to that sort of level, begin to consolidate, maybe form another support. And if we begin to break that support, then I could possibly consider looking for another sell in line with the structure on the minor time frame. Daily, the only thing for that, the daily at that point would be breaking its own high yet again after breaking the previous daily candles low. 
Oh, well, there's no need to do so just now because it did form the upper wick. Come back down to, to break that previous daily candle's low. And he's now just hovering in the middle. So, it's going to be a test of patience again on GJ. Sells below, I don't really feel comfortable, you know, because it's really not clean. The next level of clean traffic, when we are to look at it, I mean, there really isn't. I mean, there's wicks everywhere, even in this, like, once we pop below 162.60, there's just, you run into that nasty wick. I'm not sure if that was from the news, I got a feeling it would have been. Um, so, in that case, it really just needs to create a nice clean move in either direction, preferably to the downside in line with the trend. Makes it, in my opinion, a more probable setup if you are trading with the trend, so it may obviously into break black 163 flat, make a nice clean impulse, cut through the previous support, break through and close below previous support, and then pull back, look for exhaustion, and then possible entries once we have exhaustion and resistance formed. That, in my opinion, is the best play at the moment. It's just going to require a lot of patience. Buys may consider counter trend entry once we get above 164 flat. At that point there, you got cleaning candles to the left-hand side, so I'd want it to to pop above. Oh, bear with me, guys. I want it to pop above the resistance at 163.950, roughly, form the numbers, support above it, and then potentially look for a counter trend entry. At that point there, daily would have broken its own high yet again after breaking the previous daily candles low, so it came back down to crate's own low, breaking the previous daily candles low. It does begin to flip back bullish, get back above that 164 level. I do feel that we, there is potential for us to continue bullish for the remainder of the day. At this stage, it just requires, in my opinion, a lot of patience. I'm not going to rush into any GJ trade just now. When I see it's like this, I know, just let it create a move. And then maybe if it's not today, come tomorrow, you can find a more probable entry on it. So that's what I'm seeing on GJ. Gold on the other hand. So hopefully that made sense guys. Gold's looking pretty good. Uh, let's quickly do the analysis because there could be a potential entry coming up on gold. The previous weekly is obviously a strong bullish candle. Current candle, early into it, obviously it's broken higher than the previous, pulled back down to create its own low. Just going to mark in the current daily candles high. Looking at the daily structures, flip back bullish with that closure of Friday. Closing about that one, eight, four, seven, fifty, roughly. We have again pulled back down. Respected if I was to drop the fib, the fifty percent of the previous daily candle was a very strong candle. I'm not going to bother bother to to pull up the fib up because obviously we haven't retraced that far. We've formed another support in the current daily candle in the minor time frame. So we are bullish on the daily, bullish on the four hour time frame. M30, just depends on a provider. I'd still call it bullish. It is bullish on this provider on FXCM. It's actually bearish, but I'd still only be interested in selling it. Quickly drawing the zones. Again, starting the four hour. drawing that support which probably lines up around the 50 of the previous daily candle without a, actually point uh, probably a bit blow it. just adjust these across quickly clean traffic to the left once we break above current daily candles high breaking our own high for the second time so that makes sense all right, so there's obviously volume popping in just now. Uh, not going to take an impulse from 37 plus pips away by the time you actually break above the current daily candles high. Makes no sense to me, considering we don't even have a one-to-one -one target at that point to the next potential resistance at 1859 flat. So at this stage, I'm just going to need to wait 
for this M30 closure. M15, it's got no lower wick. The other option could potentially be if the M15 pulls back, creates low wick, begins to break its own high again, that will then will start to be breaking above the current daily candles high, clean traffic to the left, and may look to take an entry based on that, but obviously need to wait for it to pull back first. I'm not gonna take it without any wick formed when we're looking at M30 coming from more than 37 pips away. So I'm just gonna need to wait. Uh, Ali's looking good. I mean, it looks great for continuation once it begins to break above the high. I just, stop loss, I can't get a decent stop loss. It's a bit rushed. If you wanna take the entry. You'd be looking at entries just above the high. Stop loss, no idea just now. You'd have to use the M15. That would be about 14, 15 pips, I think. Once you count for spread, about 15. I really want to see a five minute pullback. And then I may trust that. I want to see some sort of pause, some sort of correction. And as we begin to break our own high within the current candle. So that would have to happen in the next 12 minutes. So what I would need not going to happen with this five minute candle is the next M5 to close back bearish and then I may consider it to begin to break the high of the last five minutes of the M30 potentially because at that point they will at least have had a pull back within the current candle so we've had some sort of exhaustion if we are to then pull back a bit further we should respect the candles high we should respect the highs and, and obviously pull back without popping up again looks like a may go just now though if that's the case, I'm just gonna wait. My lights come from a little bit too far for my liking. Yeah, so that's that's the option. So if it does just begin to pop above, then I just need to wait and see what his candle closes on the M30. Still may get an option above one five one eight five six fifty. Just need to wait and see. So hopefully that makes sense. Sorry, it's a little bit rushed because gold looks like or well, looked like it was about to go. Still may. Uh, Ollie, cheers, mate. Thank you. Uh, Tony, morning, morning to all the members again. Yeah. So uh, YouTube. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, let me know what you guys think. Let me know what you guys are looking at. Do you have any different opinions or looking at any other pairs? Let me know. If you want to send in charts, please feel free to do so. Gold's probably just going to go flying at the moment, but... If I was to take it, really, when this candle should have... And the entry should have come as it broke that candle's high, based off the liquidity grab, but still want to take it because you're buying it at consolidation these wicks to the left so yeah it's harder to buy above the high within a current candle but we'll see we haven't got the five minute pullback all right so youtube good morning to you for rook uh abdel hope you're well welcome back uh hey bear how are you jenny good to see you good evening to you george sydney uh good afternoon to you too my friend welcome uh, Ryan, how do you feel with fake, uh, fake breakouts? I mean, when the structure is turning bullish after a break of structure, but it was fake out to go bearish. Just need to wait and be patient. Because if, to be honest for me, I, I just, I'd rather wait for my confirmation. Just set the rules and if you execute and it tick the boxes, then I feel fine. Even if it's a loss, it's just, as long as I didn't break my rules. However, if I do break my rules and act in, out of FOMO, just for instance, if I saw this just flying and I'm stuffed and I'm buying it above the high, that's when I, I, I don't feel good about them because the market got to me. So, so otherwise I'm fine. Like I said, just need to wait, wait for the rules to be ticked off and then execute accordingly. accordingly. I don't like how this is popping about. There's no news though. I had a beforehand. Well, 
was construction per mine a pound a bit later on, which may pop up as orange folder on, on some avenues uh, miners. Obviously the CHF news, which is coming out shortly. I'm not sure if that will have an effect, it may. Uh, moving forward tomorrow, there's obviously, for those of you who trade the AUD, be wary of that. That's uh, 2.30 p.m. my time. So that most of you will be fast asleep. So probably won't be worrying about it. But either way, if you do train it, just keep an eye on it. Uh, and obviously that's a big one. We've got the Fed Chair speaking, which is also tomorrow, 2 a.m. my time. So I think that's about 10 a.m. in my time. And again, we've got for the AUD some high impact news on Wednesday morning my time, which We'll probably just reiterate exactly what the US come out with, pretty much what we do here. So I wouldn't, yeah, so <laughs> so there you go, you can maybe correlate Australian news with whatever happens prior to that in the US. Uh, another dip, gold, you know, 1854.72, nice one. Hope you uh, either secured something or, or got to break even. Yeah, this stage I'm just going to wait for the M30 closure. Being a Monday too, I, there's no rush. Uh, the last makes sense. Nice one. Thank you. And here it goes. Of course. <laughs> this is all good. All good. No panic. So he's sitting here, watching someone, commentating, and sitting by himself, thinking, "I'm gonna miss this. I'm gonna miss this." And yeah, we probably will, but. Does it tick the boxes in my opinion? No, if it ticks the boxes for you and then execute, but for me it doesn't, so. So it may spare you guys a loss if, if anyone's feeling the FOMO. May not though, may, <laughs> may miss out on win, but that's entirely up to you. There is no order set on my Metatron. However, just in case, on the next candle, I'm just gonna. Where would the entry be? What's the high of the current candle? On oh, IC markets, 1856.66, so 1856.86 would potentially be an entry on the next candle, uh, next M30. I would like to see it upper wick form though, a uh, lower wick, sorry. Because look where we come from on the previous M30 and there's been no pullback at all within this candle. So we've come from the lows, which is shot straight up. If I was to trust anything without a wick forming the opposite direction of prior to taking entry, I'd want at least on the five minute. So within the previous candle, some sort of pullback and then if we close right up near the high then it's potential for us at the open of the next count to just rocket to the upside we don't have that and we won't have that because if this candle is to close back bearish it's going to close the m30 bearish uh no sorry it's going to close the m30 bullish but it's going to close the m30 probably below this resistance likely so then i'm going to need to Probably wait for a small lower wick if I am to trust it and then look for an entry. <laughs> Just need to wait three and a half minutes to see where this candle closes. Uh, local urban, yes I have gone over GJ. My opinion is
Okay, there you go. That, that's my opinion of GJ just now. I'd rather not trade it. <laughs> In all honesty, it is just, it needs to make a move. I'll get rid of that. It's just ugly. It really is. We're getting a four hour. Absolute crap, in my opinion. Real crap. Even below that support's crap. Even below that support, it's still crap. It's just needs to make some clean, impulsive moves. Clean impulse. Like like we had here. Pull back, impulse, pull back, impulse. Correction. Broke structure, pull back, impulse. And now it's just in a phase of, of consolidation. And the markets go through that. It's not always trending. You will get periods of time where it just doesn't create impulses it will consolidate it may consolidate through a whole day it may consolidate through a, a particular session that's just how it, the markets move can't always be trending so now what I need to do is simply wait for for this to start to happen again pull back impulse pull back impulse then I'm playing within cleaner moves made the, the impulsive moves on the corrections I can look for exhaustion Look to take it on the second leg. Same to the upside if it does. Break to the upside. Break out. Break the impulse. Pull back. Another impulse. Pull back. Another impulse. So now I can look for buys from, from the support. Or I can look for buys point continuation. That is the safest play. When it's just like this. Where it is just now. For me it's just like. It's simple. Just cross. Don't even bother with it. That's just my opinion. So I'd rather be trading gold. I think it looks more likely, in my opinion. So that is my plan. All right, M30 is about to close. Wanted to now close above the bodies and accounts to the left. That is a catalyst, in my opinion. And then just create a small lower wick. We've got clean traffic to the left, coming closer to the time of volume. I just want to see a small lower wick. I don't want it to start closing back below. I mean, I won't take it, but I would prefer, I think in my opinion, it's a high probability entry if it does. We do get a counter closure above the bodies to pop the counters to the left. We're gonna get that five minute pause by the looks of it and it is likely closing us below that resistance. All right, this is better, this is better. Stop loss at this stage will probably have to be below to 15. At that point it's well back below into this range, I don't, Feel comfortable being oof. Well, it would have been would have been slipped your injury. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Yeah. Well, now I definitely need to pull back. <laughs> definitely need to see it form some sort of low wick, and then I'll be buying it above the current candles high. I do have that on my broker, mind you. It's not showing on trading view. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure what happened just there. So I do have a lower wick on my broker on my broker on our IC markets. It opened up with a gap, that's that's the that's what happened. Alright, so I don't have a lower wick. Yeah, I'm gonna wait. Because this chart is more true at the moment. My broker is open with a gap to the upside of probably about, well, I'd say about two or so pips. Yeah, if it just goes, it goes. That's simple, I'm just gonna, that's the rules I'm setting. If you wanna take it, I mean, it's, it's up to you guys.
it is only Monday as well guys, so no, no rush. Let it tick the boxes in, in my opinion. If it ticks the boxes for you, then by all means, execute. I did mention however that I wanted to see this low, a low wick form in this candle. I don't have it, so I'm just going to wait. Um, the poll question has been sent into Telegram group, so do have a look guys, do join the free Telegram group if you have not done so. Suggest you do so, reason being, you will go in a draw to, uh, to win a one-on-one -on -one session with myself at the end of the month. I do have this session with last month's lucky winner after today's stream. I'm looking forward to that. really wanted to hop back below 18.56 or 18.56.10 perhaps tap into the low of this zone into the those candles the bodies of those candles to the left then we begin to bounce off it so this is starting to look better there we go there we go got the low wick so now I'm looking at potential entry above this candles high and I'm safe now to to uh, set the order because obviously I'm not going to be triggered in unless we do pull back up and that's the level that I want to be triggered in at that's the level that makes sense for me to be triggered in at because we have broken high the previous candle now come back down to create our lower wick have no reason to break our own high again if we are to continue bearish back into the range below I'm not going to get faked out because I'm not in the trade so I've got a, pot a potential out entry I'm going to set it just now at 1856.9 stop loss is below the previous M15 and then you can adjust it to the current candle once it's triggered if you want to begin to manage it because seeing that we pull after seeing we broke the high of the previous and now come back to create our lower wick have no reason to pull back down to create to break our own low again within the current candle so that is a way to manage the trade We'll soon find out, we'll soon see. Pretty quiet in, in the chat today. to try to get off pretty quick smart today as well guys because I've got one on one session uh, later and I've got a very very uh, busy day ahead of me tomorrow as well so Let's see, let's see, it's getting close to being triggered. Okay, 
Now this is good because again, we'll try to pull back into the range below. We're rejecting, we'll begin to flip back bullish. So this is an entry I'm comfortable to take. Something I see regularly. Had a pull back now, at least on the M5, a little bit of a pause. We are close to London open, so should be volume in the market. Do have a catalyst for that previous bullish candle, closing both bodies now to the left. Now just been triggered in, so ah oh, man, two pip uh, slippage. That's rough. So I've just moved my stop loss to above, below the previous candles low. You have about eight pips on the table if you didn't get slipped. This is bopping about a lot. I'm not sure what's going on here. So frustrating, Australian being slipped all the time on IC markets. What was the entry? 570 was. 90 was supposed to be the entry. So you would have had eight, nine pips on the table. That's unfortunate. Probably enough to almost get to break even. I see markets, wow. So that's the move. That's a bit unfortunate. Um, I, it's currently my stop loss, just below the current candles low, has no need to break its own low again. So we've got just under 20 minutes until the open. I want this to pop up before. Not looking right. That's um, really unfortunate. The slippage, very frustrating. How much do you make per month? A uh, million dollars, my friend. How much do you make a month? So you want in this? Here we 
really? Of course. Uh, Jenny, I'm in. Nice one. Got slipped as well. Oh, really? About two pips. Here we go. Here we go. If it breaks its own higher. I'm going to go to break even. Yep. Mm. It's just the common thing, isn't it? My IC markets. It happens way too regularly at the moment. Because when it breaks, it breaks with a bit of volume. After Crane's Law, we can then just flip. So in the meantime, you get slipped. It happens nearly every trade. guys I've pressed close full haven't I <laughs> uh, of course I have of course I have I went to press close half and I had my wrong my finger hovering over the wrong button magic keys went to close half at at 10 instead I closed full so it's a win better than, better than closing uh better than closing it in loss so there you go guys well done Happens to it's still a win. It's still a good start to the week. Would have been a better start to the week because that popped up a fair bit more. But yeah, that's it. It was a good trade, guys. It really made sense. Tick the boxes, in my opinion. And again, I stuck to the rules. Could have gone in on impulse earlier. Had I taken an entry as it broke earlier, this candle, I probably would have closed out in a fair bit of drawdown. Got involved in a market where I wanted to be involved, which was obviously into the clean area traffic to the left hand side. That'd be up that in the M30. Clean candles up, clean candles down. Just here. Current daily had broken a high its own high after creating its lower wick. Again, that made sense for me upon continuation. Structure is bullish, catalyst candle, strong bullish uh engulf candle. Closing above the bodies and the candles to the left. Pretty standard setup that I would take every day of the week. So, so well done. Nice early win. Uh, sorry, man. Happens to all of us. <laughs> Yeah, that hasn't happened to me for a while. I used to do it too regularly, but yeah, doesn't matter. Alright, so who else took it? Did anyone actually take it? I know Jenny was in it, so well done. Hopefully you managed to secure. Uh, oh, rip, uh, still a W, exactly. How much did you make that trade? 120k. I don't think it's relevant, mate, in all honesty. It's not a huge amount what I just made. It, it's a decent amount. It's more than most of the world will be getting paid in a day's work put it this way in a matter of a minute or two a few minutes 
Actually, I'll lie, it's a lot more than that, but... It's, it's okay. What I make is okay. I'm, I don't lie, I'm not, I don't trade massive lots. Like some of the ones that you, you may watch. I, I do trade between anywhere between 1.5 and 3 usually. So you, there is money to be made with that. And money to be lost if you don't manage your risk. So that is very important, guys. You need to manage your risk. That That is really important. Um, 10 pips, exactly. 10 pips and break even. Uh, not even break even, just 10 pips because I accidentally closed full. It wouldn't have even been 10, it would have been 9 point, or it would have been about 9, let me have a look. Yeah, it was about 0.5%, so it's not even a big win, but it's still, it's better than loss. I took it, made 10, nice one. Uh, members, nice win, well done, well done. Hopefully, uh, Steve, well done, mate. I got slip two, not on our same marks this year, liquidity five gold. Yeah, yeah, actually, I think you're correct, Zach. But then again, I've been slipped on GJ also, so. Unless, yeah, it could, uh, it, you, but you are probably correct. It probably is the liquidity provider. Closed, 90% 10 pips, nice one, plus. Well done, members, well done, guys. Yeah, so hopefully the trade, the entry made sense. Um, yeah. To me, like I said, it's an entry I take every day of the week to tick the boxes. It's with structure, it's using momentum in the markets based off previous strong bullish daily counter close, previous strong bullish weekly counter close, plenty of confluence to take the, the entry. That point there, it's just now, comes down to a matter of being confident enough to actually execute and that's it. Uh, which broker do I use? Uh, I see markets, but do your own research. That's what I rec recommend. I'm not sure where you're from as well. Yeah, I do definitely do your own research. There's a link to I see markets in the description below. Look, I they're they're okay. Uh, the spreads on GJ have been pretty rank of late. Gold the spreads are generally pretty good. You're in UK, so you pretty much you're I think you're able to to open up account for most brokers. Yeah, have a look at IC markets, but like I said, check out the rest as well. Don't just jump straight into it. However, if you do want to join up for IC markets, there is a link down in the description below. You're welcome to, to check it out. No pressure. Um, I gaming Timur, good morning, happy morning, happy morning to you, brother. Jenny G got my uh, W ten pips. My runner just stopped breaking. All good. Nice one. Yeah, nice, nice one, guys. You know, save for the after chart. So I can remove this and then we can plan ahead because we don't stop because we've had a win. And for those of you who follow me on IG, you would have noticed I, I had, a, had a story, I had a story over the weekend about just trying, striving to be better and better. And, you know, I'm a confident, competent, consistent trader does that mean i stop trying to get better absolutely not so what do you guys think i did on sunday evening my time and not because i had nothing better to do i was absolutely buggered i helped my family out over the weekend so i'd worked all day long just to help them what do you think i i did i, I hit the the simulator i you know went to work tested a few things tested actually breakouts was one of the things i tested so I don't stop trying to improve because I'm not going to let the markets get the better of me. Of course, there, there will be moments and days when I do, but in the long run, if I continue to, to better myself, I will keep ahead of the game. Uh, didn't take it, unfortunately. What done to you all? Not a problem, Ollie. As long as you, you know, you, you're true to yourself, that's the main thing. 
Hi Robert, hope you're all my friend, hope you had a good weekend. Hope you not, not a problem, not a problem mate. Alright, so what's GJ up to? Still a whole lot of crap. Look, don't get me wrong, there are opportunities. That was the one, in my opinion. I decided against it. Was quite nice the fact that it did pause, similar to, to gold, how we had the pause on a five minute, but this one's more significant on the M15. It is with the structure. Did have no upper wick, probably didn't need to, the way that previous count closed. I just, I've been burnt too many times trying to trade GJ when it's when it's like this. So for me, it's just best to, to wait, let it do its thing, see where we're at. Maybe in my session, probably London session tomorrow. So GJ at 165923. It's from V7 Studio and thanks to you last week. Nice one, man. 165923. Wow. Are you still in the trade at all? Yeah, I'm not sure what your confirmations were, but well done. Guys, still in it. This is definitely a level I hope you're securing something. It's not necessarily just going to fall through. It may, but it could also. When when we see consolidation like this, there is an indicator. I think it's called, and this is again. I don't like to use indicators, but this one is really good for um to get a gauge of volume, where volume builds up at what at specific levels on a chart. I can't actually add it to my chart because I don't have TradeView Pro. I'm pretty sure it's the lazy bear volume indicator. Don't know if anyone's heard of it. Anyway, yeah, here it is. Volume Lazy Bear. It's... There you go. Weiss Wave. Actually, no, that's not it. That's not it. Because the one I was aware of, you need Trade View Profile. But anyway, what that did was the point of what I'm trying to say is what you do is you basically, similar to a fib from a high to a low. You draw in this particular indicator and that will give you a gauge as to where we have the biggest level where, where volume builds up the most at what level so if you drew it in from let's just say the low of this wick to the high there i guarantee you all the volume is building up around here where we think there's no volume because it's just consolidating there's no momentum more than anything there is volume because this is just a build up of orders. This is just people trying to buy, people are uh, placing sales. It's a massive build up. And at one, eventually at some point, this thing's just going to break to either side. Whoever wins the arm wrestle on this particular time frame, the structure is bearish. So at this stage to us, it's likely to potentially hit back down further until we see different. So until we start to close above 164.50 roughly to flip the structure back bullish but I guarantee you these levels of consolidation is where the big big uh, build up is, is being made for a move to come that makes sense so in my opinion it's just a matter of waiting on GJ uh, Literally, just need to wait. How long have we got till the open? Three minutes. Gold, now what you could probably do, because there's no real margin to buy above the high. When you're looking at to the left, we're starting to run into a 
pretty strong level of resistance. So I feel that the buys above the high are going to become a little more difficult now. Probably similar to JJ, it'd be maybe best to wait and let it actually create a nice move up now. Cut through a lot of the crap over to the left. And then look for potential buys on a pullback. I mean, aside from that, if it does pull back yet again, around that 1853 sort of level, 1853.50 form another support, that could be your next potential area to look for a buy. I'm not interested in sells, so I'm not, not just going to look for a sell as you go along with the upside, yes, it's likely it will come back down to retest support at 153.50. I'm not going to be involved in that against the structure after taking a win. Uh, what have I missed? Piece of mystery, actually, I just put a sell limit when you set a strong resistance. Oh, okay, well, if it works for you, congratulations. <laughs> not how I trade, but. I'm not going to knock it if it works for you. Uh, local urban bank's going to take out stop losses first, maybe. Um, I doubt it, mate. I doubt it. The banks have no idea where we keep our stop losses. They, they just do whatever they please, and they have no, no care in the world. They're not just sat here thinking, um, these guys are all going to have their stop loss below previous M30 low and I have no idea. <coughs> they have specific levels and specific areas where they cash in. Dial up the phone, they make the phone call. And that's it, simple as that. If our stop losses get hit in the meantime, it's just, that's how it is. Can't do anything about it. Uh, Regine, hello to you. Good. Good evening from Australia. Dollar still in bull. Uh, definitely is. We actually already had a win. Took a buy on on this breakout. So yeah, definitely bullish. Bullish across the board on gold. Also love lazy bit. Yeah, it's it's a good one, especially if you're a swing trader. Uh, Amir, what do I think of GU? Don't really have an opinion of GU. Oh, we'll have a quick look. Looks similar to gold. Uh, obviously lagging a little bit because it hasn't made a breakout. Weekly, yeah. So this is where you probably pull up the fifth just to see. I'm sure it has closed above the 50. Just to gauge, get a gauge of the strength of the previous weekly candles. Closed just above the 50% from low to high. So I would call that a strong bullish candle, but obviously it's left a long wick. To the upside. Mainly structure structure is still technically bearish. We'll flip back bullish on a closure above 1.2150 roughly. However, at the moment it is technically bearish. Strong bullish and golden candle the previous. Looks pretty choppy above on that time frame though on the daily. Current daily has yet to break the high of the previous. Pull back to create its lower wick. Four hour is, let me zoom out properly. Looks to be bullish. Actually, yeah, it's bullish. That is the highest point the mark got to. This is just consolidation. That's the lowest point. So it will remain bullish until it actually, at this stage gets close, we close below one point. 19150. So that gives me what was it? Bullish, bearish, bullish. What's the M30? M30 is also bullish. It's the highest point the mark got to remain bullish until 119, six, six, uh, 11960 at this stage, roughly. So, pretty simple on GU. It's just consolidating just now. So, what I would do, draw in a resistance, is that point there. So, the four hour level, it is two. 
it's just above the current daily candle high so the current daily will be flipping back bullish breaking above the previous daily candles high it is a wick on the four hour but it does look so much cleaner on the m30 my target would be that level there 120 70. Similar to gold though, just depends how we approach this level. I'm not going to just take it on impulse if it's come from too far back. Just going to need to wait and see how we approach. Whether it be same sort of entry as gold, wait for the candle prior to entry to close above the bodies that counts to the left, so close high up into this grey zone. Then the next candle pulls back, creates lower wick. And then we begin to break, that's a potential entry. Or similar to gold, if does close somewhat like that then the next candle pops up as gold did then pop back down to create lower wick then you're entering above the, en the entry candles high which will be a few pips higher above at that point but that's a high probability entry in my opinion cells I know they look tempting below the current support what other confluences are there? It is against the structure. Do we have a clean move up? Do we run into previous resistance over here to the left? <coughs> you need to try to correlate with something. So for me, if I was to take any counter and sell, I'd rather wait for this four hour closure, wait for it to close back. Strong bearish candle closing near its low. If it does so, that's gonna close it near this support. Near the current daily candle support, near the M30 support, <coughs> then as the next four hour county pulls back, creates up a wick, form another resistance on the minor time frames. And as we begin to break below support, at that point there, I may trust taking a counter trend sell. Cleaner entry, if you were to take any counter trend sell, would be simply to wait for it to close below, tap in, reject, and there's your entry. But in all honesty, I'd rather just buy it. Uh, yeah, that will probably be the plan on GU, but I won't be training. So good luck to you if you are. Alright, gold. Still retracing, so yeah, it just requires a lot of patience again. So well done to the guys who joined in on that trade with myself. GJ, oh, keep an eye on GJ. We're actually into the open, aren't we? Shoot, I missed it, sorry guys. Blabbering away. Uh, Aniket, yeah, took a gold breakout, which was a nice quick win. On that candle there, it was a broke above that previous resistance to the left which was the current daily candles high. Got slipped, unfortunately, about two pips, but still managed to get off 10. So yeah, nice, nice early start to the week. Nice, good start. What do I think about EU? Again, no opinion of it. Looks, yeah, it doesn't look great. It got, it looks very, this actually looks more similar to gold probably than GU, that previous candle on gold. Don't trade it, <laughs> that's my opinion. Nah. Just kidding. I think I'd rather buy it. Appears to be bullish, the bias. Yeah, but I'd probably rather buy it back at support, you know, honestly. It's made made an impulse, let it correct. Not a clean impulse, it tried to break out, it's obviously pulled back, so. Well, it's come from the lows, put it this way, so it's not really trending just yet. Maybe let it pull back, form another support, if you've got margin, look for a buy. I'd only be interested in buys on EU. Uh, ben, hope you are, man. Hope you had a good weekend. 
sent you a uh, message, by the way. Just one of you have a chance. Much appreciate appreciation for your insight. Not a problem, man. I, look, guys, I'm very different to a lot of the other streamers. I would prefer if you guys did send me some charts. Give me something to work with, either way. But as long as there's nothing happening on the charts that on the pairs that I look at, I will do my best to to take a look. I like to keep the streams flowing. I don't like to sit in silence for too long. Some of you guys probably think it, I wish the guy would shut up a bit, but better than just being on mute the whole time. Not sure what the plan is this week, by the way, guys. So I, I might be on a weekend. Uh, it's fine by me. Ho hopefully, it's fine by, by you guys. Uh, ben, nice one. Cheers, man. Uh, pink, fluffy moustache. Interesting. G-A. I like your name. G-A, interesting pair that was considering paying a little bit more attention to. Well, but for the time being, I'm just going to stick to what I do best, which is gold. And GJ is the secondary pair. However, I know a few of the guys traded, so I might, might do a little markup. There's nothing happening on gold. I can see it's retracing. GJ, like I said, just wait. All right, weekly, weak bullish candle. Opening with a little gap by the looks of it. On this provider, anyway, forex.com. No lower week. <laughs> so just by looking at previous weekly candle based off this time frame doesn't mean it has to happen but just based off this time frame that suggests to me is a good chance that this current weekly candle create just a bit of an upper week before it eventually begins to pull back down potentially breaking a low of that previous weekly candle you know i give you grab that liquidity to the upside in that previous candle seeing we close close to our low there was obviously quite a lot of sellers in the market also than a previous weekly candle. So if we do begin to break below the low, then there's a high probability we'll come down further. If we respect the low, then there's a good chance we will potentially build back up towards the high of that previous weekly candle. Daily structure is an interesting one, to say the least. This, this is one that requires, yeah, it requires you to zoom out a little bit further. I'll just go over it. That is one impulse to the upside, create a high, close to above, close to above here. I think I mentioned last week, it's not really significant close above. It did close above though, definitely at this point. Therefore, back bearish. So, so yes, technically, bearish until we close above 1.79614 to be exact what we do have though is counter probabilities to the upside so there's no gap on the daily it's just open straight bullish we do have previous daily friday's candle closing a bullish candle creating that support current daily candle is a high low higher high so looks okay on that time frame Although the structure is technically bearish for our structure is also bearish but that won't change until we get above 1.7840 roughly 380 <laughs> i'm drawing resistance at this point here doesn't look great though once we pop above honestly uh I mean, you could draw another resistance right here 
Might just do that for the time being, see what it looks like on the M30. Looks like on the M30. Uh, Run a support. So we worked out weekly was weak bullish, daily was bearish. With daily counter probability the upside for our is bearish. The bias at this stage is to sell it. But the M30 is going to tell us that structure is also bearish. I almost tricked myself, didn't I, guys? Pull myself up perfectly, right? Yeah, yeah, that's definitely bearish. The reason being, this is the lowest point Mark got to, so we won't flip back bullish until we get closures above the highs at 1.78390 roughly. And just adjust this along. So the bias is bearish. I prefer to sell it based off that. However, we will be flipping bullish on a closure above. If I was to look for a potential buy, and let me just mark in support first. Change that to blue. And then I'll just call these on minor supports. Mark in the support a little bit below. Alright. So I would. Seeing it is pretty choppy to the left once it begins to break above the current daily candles high. It's coming from low of, well, you can argue it's coming from the middle of this range. That is the actual range, the high back down towards 1.7790 roughly. So remember, guys, remember what I said about marking your ranges, dividing it into thirds? Gives you an idea of where the breakout is coming from. Again, this is just rough. This is not obviously I haven't measured it out properly. You can argue that's low third, middle third, top third. You preferably want it to come from high up and then the top third. If it's coming from the middle third, it's probably gonna travel way too far to trust it. And then what it may do is just pop up, get it pop back down. Similar to what gold did, and then you're gonna be stuck in drawdown. So if that is the case, it begins to pop up. Exact same thing as gold, you're better off just waiting for the next candle to open, creates lower wick. It's a high probability entry. In this case, it's not as clean to the left, so and it is still technically against structure until it closes above. So what I prefer to do on GA, let it actually create new impulse up, cut through all this shit to the left, pull back, may tap back into the previous level of resistance, so be preferable, spec that level, form another support, and then I look to take a more high probability buy at that point there. Above 1.7840 roughly. I think it would be a good entry. But I wouldn't be rushing into it. As for sells, don't think you quite got the margin below once you break below. Current support? No, you don't. Sells, as long as we do remain bearish, we're either going to come right up near where we currently are at, but you need to wait for confirmations, obviously. You need to wait for an M30 to close back bearish, not just any M30 if this is gonna close really strong bullish. You may need to wait for a minor support to form at this level and then look for a sell option as it breaks below my support. But either way, I'd be in interested in looking for sells at this level. Aside from that, it's even gonna, you're gonna have to wait for it to create a clean move down to cut through the support, break through, close below it, clean up the downside, pull back, and then potentially look for a sell on exhaustion with the confirmation, obviously, of a bearish candle closing. Aside from that, entries below 1.7780 roughly. Clean traffic to the left, fair bit of margin at that point. That would be another level. I'd be interested in looking for a potential entry. And hopefully that makes sense. Uh, Ryan, why didn't you enter on gold as soon as it broke the high the first time? Uh, what um, you mean here? Let me draw that zone back in just so it's easier for people to follow. You're talking about on this candle. If you're talking about this candle, I mean, 
Exact same as what I was just saying on GA. Just gonna remove the magnet tool. Bottom third. And again, guys, what other streamer will give you this sort of information? For free. Middle third. Top third. Look where I bought it. Bought it after we had a closure above or right up near the high of the, of the top third. It makes a lot more sense to enter there as opposed to taking entry when it's come from the middle third. It came from right to low of that. It's probably if you are to marketing properly, it's actually probably come from the bottom third. So in my opinion, I mean, at that point there, you just gotta ask yourself, how fast you gotta travel? And as I mentioned earlier, <laughs> had to travel Including a spread, probably about 38 to 40 pips roughly. Is that an ideal setup? In my opinion, not at all. Could do what it did do. Ends up closing back in the zone. I actually pulled back a bit further at one point. So that's my catalyst, waiting for this candle to close. Bullish, strong bullish engulfing candle. Obviously, the buyers are present, always above the buyers and the candles to the left need to form a lower wick I always love it when I see this candle which was the entry candle I'm looking for the buy pop up just break the high of the previous then pull back down to create slow wick then every single time I set a buy stop so it's gonna do one of two things it's either gonna continue back down into the range below and it's fine you're not triggered in so it's just the no trade or it's gonna do what it did do in this occasion Form a support on the M5 even. I'm not really on the lower time frames. Just here it was. And then begin to break above its own high again. Clean traffic to the left. That's a much higher probability entry. Instead of being stuck in drawdown, I was in a little bit of drawdown because of the spread. If it weren't for this for for uh sorry for the slippage. If it weren't for that, I probably wouldn't have been in any drawdown. I would have been maybe a pip or two drawdown max. <laughs> what's the answer to today's poll question um have you actually had, had a stab in it yet and then don't worry if it's wrong okay don't stress it guys i've always said don't stress it i, I don't care if you're right or wrong just uh have a crack at it so this is a chart i sent into the movements and it's not that detailed just gives in areas like just marking areas that I'd look to get involved in trades doesn't mean you can't trade within this area but the cleaner trades will come in these green areas uh, the answer to that was bullish reason being let me get rid of the drawings what have we got here so this is the lowest point the mark got to A lot of people are probably gonna look at it and think that's the origin. But what have we got here? We've actually got a pullback. We've got two candles for closing it's consecutively in the opposite direction, which to us signifies a proper pullback. We obviously got closures above. So we're now looking for the highest point, which is here. The two candle pullback in the opposite direction prior to that, which is this area here. So I'd just really include this week, I'd just include this whole level as to where structure will remain bullish as long as we remain above it. Unless we obviously close above these highs here and then we shift swing point, not a lot higher up, but it will shift up to 0.67 flat roughly. A little bit higher up. Quite a few of the guys in the members group started to trade AU. Tends to, to move, tends to uh, trend quite nicely. Oh wait, bullish, nice one man, so you got it right. Uh, Cat, so if you're a man, hope you had a good uh, weekend. Oh, literally it was nine point something in the end. I can't even see. It wasn't a big win, in all honesty, because I accidentally pressed close full as opposed to close half. But it's a good way to start the week.
Yeah, well done, Sherry. Uh, nice. Sells from 1860, 18 cells. 1860. Fair, fair distance away still. Yeah, structure's bullish, so I was only really interested in, in buy options. Um, Interesting level though, because it is a high time frame area consolidation resistance, so it could act <coughs> as a strong level again as alpha resistance. But for me, this sells could eventually be an option, but I'd need for wait for a catalyst. At this stage, that will be an M30 flipping back bearish. So I won't have that at this stage for, for quite some time. It, I prefer for it to actually make a nice clean move up now, or at least close above 1856.50 roughly, create a higher high, and then structural flip back bearish below 1852.80. Aside from that, if it does come up to this level, reject, begin to flip the micro trend back bearish. Uh, Probably closing a daily candle back bearish, then come tomorrow. My sell options may be present, but not not just now. I see we've lot a lot of you guys be looking at it, and yeah, if this day trade makes sense, but you're waiting for obviously a closure below, back in the range below. One week to the upside. I'm not jumping into it because I've taken the win with my bias with the structure. But it would make sense for it to come down to 1853.50 just now. If this counter closes back in the range, I mean. Uh, Visa Studio Production, since Pandemic Guy, already watching this man live for us. Wear a kind of hat since then I. Oh, okay, sorry, I just had to read it properly. I thought this could be going somewhere else. Now I know what you mean. Yeah, since training 9th, 16th November 2020 when he used to wear a kind of hat. Yeah, man. <laughs> since then, I really love GJ. Good vibes. Thanks, man. You're a blessing. No worries, my friend. Yeah, you would have been watching Matt. And he's still around. Boss man is still around. Somewhere. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, you'll find me on these streams more often at the moment. Yeah, I remember that. He always had a different beanie on and... I don't think he's really wearing beanies anymore. I don't think he needs to over in Dubai.
just quickly guys also, might as well mention it now before I forget, uh, it's still early into the month so if you have been considering joining the team TCG, now is a good time to do so, there's a lot of, there's hours of video content on there to go through pre-recording uh, educational videos, uh, there's a hell of a lot. There's there's a great community of traders in there. Uh, chat can be pretty wild at times. It's it's good. It's been better this year. Um, you get your daily char markups. I we will start to do more NY sessions because of the time when when daylight savings actually ends here in at the end of this month. That's a lot more suitable for me to actually be on the charts a bit later. Uh, yeah, plus many other things that you do get amongst the group, so feel free to click on the Patreon link down below if you are interested. Uh, also, if you want a little bit more intimate sort of tutoring, there's a link to my one-on-one -on -one, uh, coaching as well down there below. Um, yeah, so you're welcome to contact me and I will send you the details to, to that service as well. Aside from that, there's also our social media addresses. You're welcome to follow us. You're welcome to follow me. I'm not, like I mentioned the other week, I'm not popular. I don't have that many followers, but hopefully uh, soon enough, that'll, that'll be on the up. So yeah, pulling back, it makes sense for it to pull back. I would have preferably waited for a closure if I was to trade it. So I probably wouldn't have been in this. I'm sure there are a few of you who are, so well done, if you are. Bitcoin doing. Need it to wait today. I don't want it to pop up. DCA time is generally tomorrow for me. After I make my, my 100k day, buy a few Bitcoin. To that gentleman who was asking about how much I earn. Alright, GJ popping up still. Potential level where it could form another resistance. Good thing is it's created a clean move to the upside now. The issue is that's a very strong bullish candle. Would I like to sell against that candle or if we just have one bearish candle closing closing back in the opposite direction? Preferably not. Because it could just create a pause before it continues back to the upside. So I would need to wait for probably a minor support to form somewhere around this level and may form that support above this or around this previous level of resistance it would make sense maybe begin to consolidate something like so let me throw it in and then if you get a candle closing back below similar to gold just then so yeah, I'm waiting for a closure. Would have had to be an impulse. Once it closes back in the range below, it's a good chance of coming down to the, the opposite end of the range to retest it. So if JJ did create another support at this previous resistance, you could look for a potential entry on either a closure below or maybe an impulse entry. I always prefer closures, but the impulse entry is there as long as it ticks the boxes as it did with gold. Execute. And that's it guys, just have to plan ahead.
Sorry, guys. All right, if I missed anything. Is he muted for a while? I don't hear any sound. Uh, turn your volume up, mate. No, I was just replying to a message. So I apologize for being quiet. I know it's not often, but I was quiet for a few minutes. Uh, local Urban says, Hope Brother, I started off last week with a $55 account. I'm not at 240. I'm not at 240. I think it best to continue to compound or try 10k funding. <coughs> Don't quite understand. I'm not at 240. So if you start with $55, is that you? I mean, it's 240 your target or something. I have no idea what 240 has got to do with any of it. But um, yeah, I would say you need to become consistent. I don't worry about compounding anything in that. Just what you need to worry about is the process, you know, honestly, just about being consistent in doing every, in every single facet of what you're doing, what time you come to the charts, what you do when you come to the charts, how you mark up your chart, do your analysis, set some rules, have a plan, execute if and when the time comes. You need to become consistent with all that. You need to have a, whatever you like to call it, strategy slash, slash edge. You need to make sure it works for you. Whether that be through, you know, back testing through simulating. So you have enough data to suggest you can trust yourself that it works for you, your style of training. And I'd be doing that for, I think 50 is not even enough, but Minimum 50 trades, gather all your data from those trades. If you're consistent, if you've got a decent win rate, you know, preferably more than 65, around 70% or so, then you can possibly start to think about maybe consider taking a, a funded account. But those accounts are very clever. They're designed to they're designed to, to take your money and reason being is because once you have a target over your head, things become so much more difficult than, than what what they normally would be. If you have to target, let's just say 10% month, and it's not much, it's not like it's, it's ungettable, it's definitely gettable. But what if you take a, a bad trade to start and I've been, I've seen, like I've heard all these stories. Um, yeah, I haven't taken a a funding account myself. I've been contemplating it, but the thing that puts me off is I know how what works for me. And yes, I can make 10% a month, but yes, there are months where I won't make 10%. I'll make less than that, but I'll be profitable. So, do I, you know, put myself out there and try a funding account? Maybe. I know my discipline is good enough. I know I've got control of my emotions. Do I expect to pass it for straight up? I don't have any expectations at all, at all. That's the biggest thing you mistake you can have is to have expectations. Just have a plan, follow it, execute on your actual plan, execute on your trade, be consistent. Once you get good at that, think about it. Don't rush it. All I can say is just don't, don't rush it. Take your time. That is a really good piece of advice I can give to you and I've had enough experience. So I would take that advice and just keep doing what you're doing. Become really good at that, become consistent. Don't over risk, don't just stick to the rules, don't over leverage. Read it like it's a, a million dollar account. And it may sound stupid because I know you might see a few dollars return on a $55 account if you are practicing proper risk management and not over leveraging. But in the long run, once you do go up in account size, you may go up to a $500 account and you should be comfortable following the exact same process, seeing a bigger figure return or loss. Same goes to, you know, when you go up to a thousand or two thousand and you know, then you get up to 10, 20K. So yeah, just stick to, to being consistent in what you're doing. Thanks bro, not a problem man, not a problem. Good question though. Uh, Theo Phillips, what's the best app to backtest? Pretty sure there's a link to Forex Tester 5 in the description down below. 
pretty it's a pretty good one it's the one i've been using uh over the weekend so i do recommend it um i think i've only got the basic plan so i can't work out how to trade gold on it it's a little bit disappointing but to be honest i'd rather backtest gj because i feel more comfortable in gold not saying that you know give you oh, <laughs> no one's perfect but i just my results are better on gold i've got a much better win rate on gold so I'd rather you know try things out on gj with it what was the biggest drawdown and come back from uh it just depends i mean i've blown accounts so come back from from that to be bigger better and better but all that's in the past never again it's simple now i can follow my, my process my personal process consistent with it it's never going to happen again doesn't mean i'll never go through stage where i go into a bit of drawdown i had that two weeks ago did I, you know, panic, change anything? No. Still executed according to my rules, just didn't work for a week. Came back last week stronger. Started this week, week well, so... All in all, that's why I say you need to test it out over a, a large sample set, and then you'll know. Don't You don't need to panic. If your win rate's generally 70-80%, and you take two, three, four losses in a row, there's no need to panic. Stick to doing what works. Eventually, the tables turn back around. So, I, look, I don't want to jinx myself. Touch wood. <laughs> I've taken three wins in a well, and a break even. Three wins and a break even since that that week it was my worst one for a long time. Uh, V Seven Studio. I agree with you, other YouTubers always putting 400 500% or more in a month, which is like a gamble. Yeah, a certain uh, <clears throat> streamer. Again, I, I don't want to mention names or anything, but just be careful who you follow, guys. That's, that's all I say. That's why I stick to guys who talk about 10 30% a month, which is reasonable. It, it is reasonable, but again, it doesn't mean it has to happen every month. A profit is is reasonable then <laughs> jay don't know cheers man if uh oh, phillips will give it a go yeah that's it trying to recover from my three percent drawdown that's not that bad man you know honestly you, can i ask you are you doing a funded account or you don't need to answer if you don't want to it's all good So gold could now come back down to 1852 roughly, 1851, 1852 to 1851, form another support, and that could be a good area to look for a potential buy. As long as it makes a pretty clean move down, it's made a nice move up, makes a clean move down, forms a support, then there's a good chance it will eventually retest back up towards the current daily candles high. And that's potentially where you could look for a buy option. JJ rejecting that range of broke out of.
All right, so GJ, interesting now to see it does, as I mentioned earlier, form a support at the same previous resistance to the left. And remember guys, it's still technically bearish. There we go, liquidity handle. Got that liquidity grab. So it's a good chance it will come down within the current candle. I'm not definitely not entering. That's a nice candle close on the M15. If this is the M30, it'd be a pretty pretty nice entry just now. You could say it's broken out, closed back below. The M15 is just probably not a high enough time frame confirmation in my opinion. The previous M15 broke the high of the bullish candle. Therefore, has no reason to pull back down to break that candle's low. It did so. It closed bearish engulfing candle, closed right at low of that previous candle. This candle is now tapping back in. If it begins to break below, the only concern is it's got that little minor resistance on the M15 just below it. So, yeah, I'm not looking at it. I'm not going to take it either way. For me, less is more. Especially on a Monday. Wasn't bad return on that gold tray. Better than to kick up the backside, that's that's for sure. But again, it's not about that. That takes care of itself. Yeah. Also, guys, if you haven't already, if you could hit that like button, that'd be much appreciated. Ah, oh, shit. Sorry, guys. I didn't realize the members have dropped off. That's fine. I'll eventually switch over to Zoom, guys. I, I do apologize. I need to uh, get the details from, from Matt. Uh, Thomas Shelby, hello to you. Any form of support around this level. <laughs> it's similar idea to what I had up here. Did form a support around this level, consolidate, and as it begins to break that support, that is a potential entry. I mean, there's a potential entry on the next M30 if this one does close like this. Because it is closing back quite strong bearish, isn't it? Against that previous candle. I'd prefer it to close below that resistance on the M50, M30. And then you insert clean traffic, clean move down, clean move up. So if it was to draw that across, that's something like that. Closes below that level.
Legs day today in the gym, so I'm gonna definitely be feeling it tomorrow. An effort walking out there today. And not from heavy weights, I, I openly admit I don't lift heavy weights. I yeah, no need for it, in my opinion. For me anyway, for what I want. I just really high intensity is the way I go. Sweating it sweat it up. Contract my muscle uh, connection, contract the muscles properly. Almost thought I pulled a glute muscle. <laughs> sure I'll pay for it tomorrow, but no pain, no gain, gain, hey? Yeah, so this stage is just bouncing off that level. So ideally, if it does, if it do so on an M15, Try to correlate it with maybe a minor pause on the M30. Ideally, if it does into do something like this, consolidate again. Then it's as simple as, as I mentioned before, you're waiting for closure blow. Or if you have your catalyst, trigger, trigger candle, signal candle, you can potentially take it on impulse. And if you do pay attention when you watch these streams and you've been Turning up regularly, you would know what I mean by some of those catalyst candles. It's pretty quiet in the stream. In the chat. Maybe there's, there's not many of you here. I may just call it because like I said, I've got a busy evening here and day tomorrow. So well done today guys. Moving forward, like I said mentioned on GJ, if we do form another support around this level, then potential entries, in my opinion, will be cleaner once we get below 163. 40, roughly 420. May just happen now though, and that that's the case. That's fair enough. I probably personally wouldn't be entering. Um Yeah, if it does begin to break now, I'd just wait. Let it create a clean move again to the downside. Then maybe as it pulls back, exhaust similar sort of scenarios to what I mentioned at the start of the stream. Then you can look for a potential entry. In all honesty, I'd rather, I just want to see GJ cut through all this crap. Look at that, it's just terrible. I really want it to create a clean move up, come back tomorrow and see where we're at. That's what I'd be doing with GJ. Let it do its thing, I know from experience when it's, it's like this on a high time frame, it is really nasty to trade it. So I'd stay away personally, gold, Boy, I was rejecting, pulling back. Don't push across the board. It's gonna be the more data that prints where we currently are within this, this range, the more difficult it is trading trading this range because you got starting to get all these wicks to the upside, downside. Comes really choppy. So if that's the case, buy entries this stage. Where would I buy it? I mean, it's not. I'm even clean once you get above this resistance. I think it's similar to GJ. I think you just need to wait for it to create a nice clean impulse. Pull back, exhaustion, form a support, and then potentially look for a buy. A lot of sells against counter trend, but at this point, the daily is pushed pull back up a bit further to create the upper wick. It is, if it does begin to pull back down to break its own low, rejecting 
all this resistance to the left lines up with that previous support. Seeing we've created a high, low, high, high, there is no real need for us to come back down and break current daily candles low at that point there. Breaking below the 4 hour support, break below the current daily support on the M30, the minor time frame support. But again, that's up to you if you want to take the counter trend entry. Otherwise, if you want to do, use the fifth trick on a daily, mark in 50, previous daily candle because it's a strong uh, body bullish candle. Now remove the fib. And if price does come down towards 1846.15, form another support, then you could potentially look for a buy from, from support. It's still going to be bullish in structure, so makes sense. So if it comes down to that level, forms another support, and potential buys back up. That would be the game plan moving forward. Um, yeah, well done today. Well done to the guys who took the gold trade with myself, well done to the members, if you took it. Uh, in the meantime, if you haven't hit the likes, like button already, can you please do so on your way out. And also if you wanna know a little bit more about what we do at TCG, as I mentioned before, it's a good time to join the Patreon group, Start the month, still early in the month. It's of uh, video content, educational content in there, along with the chat, the group chat, plus much more. Uh, link to my coaching is down below as well. You're welcome to contact me, ask me any questions, feel free to do so. If you want to follow us on our social media pages, also feel free to do so. That is all down below. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Trade safe, trade smart. And I shall see you guys tomorrow. Pretty sure tomorrow. If not, Matt will be here. One of us will be here. Bye for now. Cheers, guys.